What is going on everyone and welcome to Cart 6T3. My name is Ben. Uh, just up front so you know who is speaking to you and uh, this is cart 6 t3 my channel uh, for new people right? you know that the people who watch these videos I'm sorry for this but to anybody new coming into the channel uh, that we do tips and tricks I cover uh, tires and prep and all sorts of uh, uh, cart theorem and in uh, you know racing type stuff and uh, thank you very much for stopping by if sometime during this video if you didn't mind uh, maybe hitting the like on the video, possibly subscribe to the channel if this type of stuff suits you, interests you, whatever it may be, I, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm wearing my Joey Logano hat today. That may just have ridden all my... <laughs> All new fans of this channel are like, well, I was going to watch this guy, but now that I find out he's a Logano fan, uh, I'm no longer going to uh, to, to watch him. Um, I am a Joey Logano fan. He just won the championship. That would be title number two for him. I was very excited last week. So uh, this, is, uh, this is one of my favorite topics. Uh, it, not topics to talk about so much as... I love chassis design. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about when new models come out, the, it really interests, I don't know, the, the, the technician in my brain. I'm not really a technician, but uh, that kind of stuff truly interests me. Uh, uh, it's art. Chassis design is art. Now, I've taken, uh, I found a whole bunch of pictures on like Google and stuff like that and uh, some websites from a whole bunch of chassis manufacturers. So. Back in the day when carts were created, all right, let's let's first you know define what a cart is. A cart is a you know racing cart, but a reason a cart is a cart is because it does not have suspension. Uh, that's what the way I've always known it. If it has suspension, it would be considered a car. Uh, I don't know why you know whoever determined that, but I've always known it to be like that. So cart design would be just you know without suspension, tires are it. So. The flex of the chassis is your spring rate, is how the cart handles. So I, I gathered, uh, I'll probably put them up now, but I found some older pictures of what carts used to be. And I'm taking nothing away from vintage guys. Some guys really like to take some of these carts, restore them back to their original greatness, and they're, they're mostly straight rail. So straight rail, I would refer to as... Uh, a road course cart, your rights and lefts type of thing. Could you race them on an oval? Of course you could. That's initially how this started. Uh, you know, dirt racing on ovals, they, they would take straight rail chassis, just add a bunch of left to them, move the seats left, put weight over there, add stagger to them so they would turn left and, and you know, and, and would do somewhat what a current chassis would do. So very, very different uh dynamics of the chassis. You'll notice in some of the pictures, the hoop, which is from the center of the chassis forward, was a lot bigger on some of these older chassis. And I had a, uh, I believe it was a 99 Coyote Thrasher. And if I, I, I think I found a pic of that, and I, I'll have shown that, but how big the front hoop was, how big the front end was, and, and the geometry that went into that, it causes the front end to be a lot softer. Um, and, and maybe maybe less effective for turning. You know, I, I know it worked, don't get me wrong. Back in the day when, it, when that, that, was the, that was the new technology, that was something, but as we've progressed, as, you know, chassis has, has gone into, uh, you know, the, the newer ages, now it's in computer design, they design this stuff, you know, and then uh, like Phantom, for instance, have robotic welders, and this is all specifically, you know, lined up. So. Some of the, the chassis manufacturers I found, well, Phantom's the first, you know, the Phantom's the one I run, so that's going to be, I won't say my favorite, but they're, uh, as far as chassis design, but very unique, always, you know, kind of, I, I think, at the forefront of speed and, and design with that robotic welding, with the, you know, they're, they're definitely using some sort of, you know, CAD or something like that to z design these chassis, put them out on, on the track for speed. Um, I will tell you that from... W you know, knowledge I've absorbed moving even a crossbar. So the crossbar that goes, you know, kind of behind your seat from the engine side rails to the left side rail. If you move that an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, an inch, three inches, 
that is going to change the dynamics of the chassis and how it handles in the corner. You wouldn't think they would be that sensitive, but they are. I've, I've heard this numerous times throughout, you know, 20 years of racing that even moving a crossbar just a smidge really does make a difference. So when you're getting into the design of things, you make your, you know, uh, some of these are exceptionally creative. Um, this video kind of, you know, it, it came to my mind. I had been thinking about doing it. Don't get me wrong. You know, chassis design is always on the kind of, like I said, it's it's one of my biggest interests. But uh, Ultramax uh, just released their brand new chassis. And I thought that was very unique. Um, I've seen other unique chassis. I, you know, the the Phantom Deuce with a dual rail on the, on the other side. I actually raced one of those. Um, this one has more of a right side layout. To where you can adapt and change for different uh, for different conditions, uh, wherever you, whether you be down south on the, the hard pack stuff or up north where it's a little bit looser, up in the northwest where it's a little bit looser type but but gritty type of bite is what I'm gathering from videos I've seen out there. So that would give an element another ability to adjust the chassis, not only cross, not only your weight percentages, but once you start playing with you know fine tuning. With chassis flex, that's going to be amazing. Uh, some other uh, companies that I, 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 you know, enamored with, uh, Kinetic, uh, fantastic design. I really enjoy that one. Millennium's a really good one. Uh, Slacks up here, they're Buffalo, New York, so that's a very a, a quality, not an overly complicated design, but a a quality type design. Uh, and I found some other ones. There's definitely uh, it was Riot Riot chassis for UAS. That is super unique. I tried to find one of Wayne Felch's. Uh, I believe he's called it, called it the Crossbones. That was a UAS specific type design. I mean, Wayne did, uh, if I can find a picture at least of the outside, I'll put it in here when I'm talking about it. Um, but I couldn't find the actual photos of the cross, what was called the Crossbones, or at least the, that I, uh, I remember it being called the Crossbones. But there are just so many different chassis ideas and, and concepts out there. Uh, who was who was the one, uh, shoot, I'm drawing a blank. And as soon as I <laughs> think of it, when I'm editing this video, I'm gonna put the chassis right here. They were at the Nationals. Oh, I, I knew as soon as I went to talk about it, I was gonna forget, Outcast, I got it, I got it. Outcast. I'm gonna put Outcast right here. Uh, they, they put up some money for the Grand Nationals. Uh, again, a very unique design. I, I love chassis design. The, it, you know, the, the sky's the limit type of scenario that, you know, you, you move some, some tubing and this and that. One of my favorite designs used to be, I don't know if I'm going to get, you know, if I can find a picture of it. I believe it was called the Helix, uh, Ward Carding Supply in North Carolina. I used to ride an Epic. I had, I believe my very first UAS win on a Infinity Epic. And that was in 2007. It was a prototype of the Epic and uh, before they came up with the clamshells. Anyway, uh, Ward was very good at that. He had a Vortex at one point in time, I think was the name of it. And uh, since then, uh, another Trek Olympic is an amazing designer. I had a Trek Olympic uh, Panaz. I definitely won a whole bunch of races on my Panaz Pro. Um, Trek Olympic has, I, I, I it, I'm not coming up with a name now, but I'm sure, you know, it, it'll be <laughs> showing the pictures that I'm showing here. But I just want, I thought, I find this stuff super interesting. It's not that I'm overly knowledgeable about it. It's not that I know what every bend and twist and, and this and that does. But I thought that maybe I would share a passion of mine because every time I see a, a new chassis designed, uh, I, I just, I find it amazing that people are getting that creative that are, you know, they're able to run their CNC tube uh, benders or regular to, if you're building them out of your own shop, you know, that you're bending these, uh, bending these frames up, making jigs and, and being able to replicate some of this stuff. I, I just think it's amazing. I really do. Uh, engineering is, uh, I don't think I'd be any good at it. I'm not, you know, all that great at the, the math aspect of that stuff, but designing, I think that, uh, it's super creative. 
And uh, I, I really do appreciate all the manufacturers that continuously try and, you know, go to the next level, create something new, you know, something nobody's seen before. And maybe, just maybe, there's an element of speed in that design that people, you know, start to scratch your heads like, holy crap, you know, I can't believe we missed that. And then that element ends up in a, in a you know, in becoming the norm, becoming something that, you know, other chassis manufacturers like, I know it's amazing that this one company figured that out, but we're totally taking that idea because, you know, that just works. So uh, just a, a quick video for you guys today. A quick, I, I say quick video at the end of the video. It's obviously not a quick video. Uh, just real quick towards the end of this, I, I want to let you know, I put a post up about this on my YouTube uh, in the community page, but from here until uh, April, I'm going to only be doing one video a week. I'm sorry, guys. I just, you know, lots going on. Christmas is coming up. There's there's all sorts of stuff that I kind of, I don't want to say I get behind, but it's nice to have a bit more time to do other things, to concentrate on other things rather than, you know, specifically trying to put out two videos. I'm still contemplating the idea of the uh, live stream once a week. Getting myself to do it is a, is a whole nother ball game. If I w were to do it, I was thinking I would release a video on Sunday and then I would do a live stream uh, Sunday night sometime or another. Still haven't convinced myself to do it. Not sh quite sure where to set up. I have all the equipment. I have a microphone. I have a webcam. I have a laptop. I have the, the uh, program uh, in order to do it. Just finding the time, getting it hunkered down to where I want to do it and I'm willing to do it You know, every single week to dedicate that time to you guys. Is it, it? It's not in the cards quite yet, but it might be. You know, shortly I may just say, "Hey, you know, it's time to do this." So uh, once again, I appreciate every single one of you coming by. Uh, it really does mean the world to me that you guys still watch my videos, that you still, you know, write in the comments. Uh, I, I tr again, I try and answer every single one of them best of my abilities, my email, all that stuffs in the drop down in every one of these videos. If you ever need to get a hold of me, I try my best to point you in the right direction. Um, I, I don't knowingly lie to anybody. Uh, if I don't know, I don't know, I admit it to you or I'll take my best guess at, you know, trying to point you in the right direction to find the answer to that or point, point you to somebody that might know the answer. Um, I'm never gonna, you know, <laughs> knowingly lie to you. All right, guys, uh, I will see you next week for another video, okay? All right, catch you later.